Hello, I'm General Waffles of the Breakfast Brigade. This is a Falstad quick match. Falstad's a hero that's kind of fallen out of grace. You don't see him very often these days, though he still does a lot of damage. I think it's pretty good, despite the fact that I don't like playing him. I really don't know what it is about him, it's just he, I don't find him enjoying. Even though all of his abilities are pretty fun to use. So basically, instead of a mount ability, you can fly around the map, so he has really good map presence. And you can build him a few different ways. This build is sort of a hybrid build, and I was kind of not paying attention and just reading stuff there, so I was far back. So his passive is one that I don't really like. It gives you movement speed outside of combat, and I don't really like that ability too much because I don't like passives that don't do anything. And I don't feel like that does much. Like it helps, but since you can fly, yeah. It helps you get around the map, like Brightwing has her little uh, phase shift ability. But, or not phase shift. Yeah, phase shift and she also has pixie dust to get around. But I, don't th I think Falstad could have benefited from having a more active combat ability since he's so squishy. So this one I... We're kind of just pushing back against top because, well, quick match. And I'm just all alone against this Tassadar and here comes Zeratul. Zeratul accidentally missed. I'm actually going to get really lucky with the Zeratul in the early game. Yeah, Falstad, he's so squishy throughout all stages of the game. It makes him so hard to actually auto-attack people. So I will want to make sure I build that survivability coming the mid-game. Although, mid-game in this map is uh, late-game. The they also have a Butcher, and I'm really afraid of the Butcher coming in and charging me, because the only real escape I have is a barrel roll. And in some situations, that helps out. But it's sometimes that can just set up guaranteed death if he combos it with Zeratul. So mines are about to open, so I just start spamming all my abilities. Pray that Zeratul isn't coming to horribly murder me in recall so I can fly into top. Because I have this really, really good mount ability, I can just go back and get right back in the action with full health. Where someone else would have to walk the entire way. I get right on top of Jim Raynard, and I just decide to start damaging him. Illidan was in the bushes and then decides to come at me for some reason. Jim Rayner comes out to make him regret that. I barrel roll in for the kill. Barrel roll, still a really, really good ability. So now it's next talent choice. This one I take charged up, mostly because gathering power, I don't want to hold on to the stacks. I don't want to rely on my auto attacks. Because this is not a sim this is not simply an auto attack build; it's more of a hybrid build. And I don't think that the barrel roll not costing anything is going to be too relevant. So I just pick up uh, more charge of lightning, and it might come in handy. And later on at level 13, that will become more shields. Here, the team kind of just gets wiped out. Illidan has actually been gaining more popularity recently. Now that Kel'Thas and Jaina have been lesser picks, like they're still dominant, don't get me wrong, but they're not being picked as much. So here, Illidan and I go in, the Butcher is fighting with Avatar, but he was able to scuttle away. I just barely missed that interrupt. He probably would have gotten away, but now Illidan and I come in on these two at low health, and we just kind of clean them up. Lightning Rod is so good against Illidan. Here's the Butcher coming in, but I save my barrel roll, and I just kind of back up and stutter step him down. Illidan's able to actually make sure he doesn't get to me. Normally Butcher will just catch up to you, and it's a bad time. But not when Illidan's there. So we got the superior amount of skulls, so... We want to make sure that we're trying to control camps at this point and trying to get ready to push or defend. Although we should be pushing since we do have such a skull lead. And it is the first one. But Jim Rayner just comes right a little too far out. 
didn't have his passive healing up and Abathur and I were able to take him down. Now, here's the next one. I have to read this because I always choose the wrong one, but it's... When the hammering is out, you do crit damage. This is why at level 1 I picked up the hammer stays out longer, is because you can get more damage out of it. You can get about 3 auto attacks if you're standing still. If you're chasing people, the ability is less effective, but if you happen to be running away from people, it's really good because the hammering stays out longer. So I... Other than it just being a good ability overall, I picked it specifically against the Butcher. They're just moving in. Make sure to kill these Siege Golems as soon as possible because they will just try to push down everything. The majority of the team did stay back to defend. Jim Rainer's coming back up here now though. Butcher runs in on me, but I'm able to just barrel roll away and the monk can keep him back. Jim Rainer coming in to scare him off. Yeah, we're just pushing this down. I'm just trying to work in damage on the Butcher whenever I can, because he is a major threat to me. So is Zeratul, but Zeratul is seen right now, and the Monk does have that reveal ability that's keeping me safe. I move forward, pop Jim Rainer's healing, and we just keep pushing everything down. Illidan's still up top, pushing with our Siege Giants now. Just trying to get Illidan off of Jim Rainer. Yep. Enemy team just can't really engage into us. Like, they're just not at the point that they need to be at to contend with us. I move past the line and kill Illidan and then barrel roll away. I possibly could have killed Zeratul, but it may have been at the cost of my own life, and he ends up going down anyway to the monk and Jim Rainer. So now at this time I can recall because I have that flight ability and then can fly back, but I will not be flying bottom. I'll be flying top to help Illidan with this push. And Zoop. Illidan being attacked by Tastar and the enemy Illidan, but I am here. We do have our level 10s, and that is a very big deal. Coming in, doing a lot of damage, and boom. Was it worth a Tenderland Blast or shocking off him? Maybe not, but he's dead. I'm alive. There, Tassadar gets taken down by the might of Illidan, mostly. I'm not even sure if I hit him with anything but an auto-attack. And we are able to get that top four. Now, this is kind of the problem with this map, though. Once you gain a dominant position, it's really easy to maintain it, since the map is so small. And we're just able to kind of always come in and be at the right place. And our the team's doing really good. But their team disjointed a little bit, and then they got strung out. And well, now they're in this position, and it's going to be really hard for them to come back on this particular map. There's no boss. They have to win on skulls, or they have to push down something. They're not really built to push. Like, they're really team fight oriented Illidan coming in at the wrong time. We'll just run away. Our Illidan does have the top hat of Abathur to keep him doing way more damage than he should be. Uh, Monk uses Divine Palm a little bit late and ends up doing nothing. Zeratul gets revealed by the Q of Jim Rayner. I don't know if he knew. That was kind of lucky. The Hyperion coming down. We can just put a lot of pushing power down here. And now it's time to retreat. I wait to use my barrel roll until Butcher hits me and then I just hit your land blast and keep walking away. And team keeps going in, we end up getting Jim Rayner and the Butcher right before the mine spawn, so we will have the numbers advantage and the su far superior level advantage going into the mines. And now I can just fly over here and get back in there. Static shield, this is what I was talking about. Uh, so every time your shield strikes, you gain a percentage of the damage in a shield. Like here. I'm gaining shields every time the lightning strikes. He was able to cancel it with metamorphosis and we just have to let him go because we don't have the chasing power, it's wasteful. So this will be really good while dealing with the Butcher and dealing with people like Zeratul. Uh, because the Butcher comes in on us, we can just hit that and the additional shields could make the difference in the fight. And if we can get it off early, then it'll make us a lot harder for Zeratul to burst us. That's what's going to come down to in a lot of fights. You know, if we were a lot more even, anyway. Uh, the monk, I believe he accidentally 
put his divine palm on the wrong person. And then I just kind of come in and kill Zeratul as he tries to walk away. You know, three for one, still not bad. Uh, Rainer could have been saved, but, you know, it, it's kind of hard to target things in this game sometimes. Yeah, you know, for me anyway. That's why I like skill shots so much more. There I didn't pay attention to the little circle and I had to barrel roll out of it, and now I just don't have that ability. But now we have an insane skull advantage. 83 to 17, and all we need to do is push with it to win. At this point in the game, we have three levels on them. It's about to be two levels, but we are chasing Illidan away. Illidan does go down to our team. And now we have a numbers advantage, level advantage, skull advantage. All the advantages in the world. So, I just wanted to walk over there and push. But the team decided that they wanted to grab these Merc camps. And that's perfectly fine to hedge your bets a little bit. Yeah. This game sometimes going all in can either screw you or just win you the game outright. And it doesn't hurt to be a little bit prepared. Take out those siege giants so they can't do anything. And now I've just got the monk coming in. He's not going to do too much, but he's going to be a little bit annoying for the team to deal with. And he can't just jump back to us. And he has that divine palm. I get off fairly decent ultimate, only hit two people, but resulted in a death. And I'm just kind of trying my best to be wherever the enemies are. Make sure I can keep putting out that damage. We only lost Illidan for that. And their goal is not going to get much farther. And now it's just time to go in for the win. Yeah. This is sometimes... This is a lot what I believe this game is about. Oh, I picked up the stun to deal with the Butcher even more. And Illidan. This is what this game is sometimes all about. Poor Jim Rainer. About building a momentum and then holding that momentum and riding it to victory. You just need to realize when you have that momentum and then how to use it. But that was the game. Don't care for this map too much for that reason. It's just so easy to tempo out your opponent. And I, I like the games that last at least to level 20 to get all your talents. But anyway, victory for us. Level 5 false dead. Yeah. Let's just check out the stats real quick. Yeah, I didn't do too amazing on anything in particular. The team did a whole lot. That's it for this video. Till next time.